Today is Tuesday, January 12th, and this is your daily cast of The Long and Short of It, brought to you by The Exchange. I'm Lindsay Nielsen. And I'm Don Downing. We mentioned before that one advantage of signing up with Market Mover Trading is that you receive what are called prediction points. These indicate price levels the market is likely to play between, but let's put it in more simple terms. To illustrate our point, imagine there is a ball bouncing between the floors of a building. The floor acts as support while the ceiling acts as resistance. Putting gravity aside, the ball will continue bouncing between the two points unless there is enough momentum to either break through the floor or the ceiling. The same can be said about the market and knowing where these points are is key. Exactly. Remember that people move the market and you always have opposing thoughts. Some believe that the market is too high while others believe it could go higher. And there comes a point when one mentality dominates the other, forcing the market to move. But sometimes it can take a while to break through a given range. And that's where the prediction points come in handy. Market Mover Trading has already identified these resistance levels, which takes the guessing of how high is too high and how low is too low out of the equation. Now let's give you an example. Market Mover Trading sends you the prediction points before the first announcement of the day, as you can see here. This candlestick shows the 6.30 announcement. It was bad news, but notice that the market doesn't break through this prediction point. After the announcement, it comes back up and tests this line, but notice what happens at 8 o'clock it doesn't break through this prediction point. And after that, it continues to test the same line. These prediction points are not only accurate, but extremely useful when trading. Each day they are different, and you only receive them when you've signed up with Market Mover Trading. You'll learn strategies to use them for both entrance and exit out of the market. Just know that they're part of the system to reduce risk and loss. If you or someone you know would like to learn more about the exchange and market mover trading, we're holding two introductory seminars tomorrow at our Orem office at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Mountain Center time. We also have a webinar scheduled at 2 p.m. Register at our website at www.theexchangeut.com. We also hold our boot camp classes each week for those of you that have already signed up. To register, please call 877-747-3450 or email Sydney Maurer at sydney at theexchangeut.com. Today's shout out goes to Chris Dave. He went through our boot camp training last week and we wish you the best of luck. Remember to email shoutout at theexchangeut.com with your stats and let us know how you're doing. If we highlight you, you'll be entered into our weekly drawing for a $25 gift card. Tomorrow, January 13th, there are two announcements. First, at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, we have crude oil. And then at 12 p.m., we have the Beige Book. And that's all we have for you today in the studio. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the two sets. Hi, I'm Pam Millett, and I have this day in history, January 12th. On this day in 1906, the Football Rules Committee legalized the forward pass. Until then, football consisted of only running. I don't know about you, but I'm sure glad they did because my favorite part of football is the pass, and I think it makes the game much more exciting. Haiti W. Carraway, a Democrat from Arkansas, was the first woman elected to the U.S. Senate in 1932. She had been appointed two months earlier to fill the vacancy caused by her husband's death. On January 12th of 1999, Mark McGuire's 70th home run ball was sold at auction in New York for $3 million to an anonymous bidder. It was the most money paid for a sports artifact. McGuire's ball was retrieved three and a half months earlier by a 26-year-old research scientist who had been attending the game with a group of office friends from Washington University when the ball came flying at him. What a lucky day for him. Finally, in 1971, all in the Family debuted on CBS TV. Carol O'Connor starred as the cantankerous Archie Bunker. Rob Reiner as Meathead with his wife Gloria played by Sally Struthers. And of course we can't forget Edith, the Dingbat, played by Jean Stapleton. Originally it was ABC that had plans to broadcast the series and under the title, Those Were the Days. This premiere also has the great honor of boasting the first toilet flush on TV.